So hi, my name is Ashley Bolion. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me on behalf of Disability Rights Louisiana and people with disabilities across the state. Um, so we wanted to do this interview just to see your outlook on disability related issues. So my first question to you is what is your assessment of access to health care and home and community-based services for people with disabilities? Well, first off, not only are they um, entitled to it, they, they have a right to it, and they've proven for whatever their particular disability, they've obviously gone through something, have it be from birth or some effect along the way. Um, I can tell you in my personal career, because I've owned manufacturing facilities and rental stores, over 500 across the country. But specifically at our manufacturing facility, we fabricate, we're inflatable structures. And I absolutely love to work with people of disabilities because they seem to be not only the ones that care the most, but they're also very sensitive. They, they're always uh, aware of their surroundings. And it's my personal assessment, while we might use that word disability that some people look bad on it, I, I look at it as different. It's actually a talent. It's, it's a gifting. They become so much aware of other things in their natures and surroundings. Um, I remember I was on a construction site one day and there was a, a deaf mute and that was obviously a disability and there was some scaffolding and the scaffolding was getting ready to fall over. He knew about it before everybody else. And, and he learned, he earned my respect. He showed he cared. And um, I, quite frankly, I think not only are they entitled to health care, I think we should give employees, excuse me, employers an incentive to hire those with disability to get them out in public and to work with others if their disability does not prevent them from being in a working environment. And do you have any ideas on implementation of these ideas? Yes, well, to an employer, it obviously has to do with the economics, you know, providing pay that whatever they would do. I think there should be some assistance because if you look at the whole system, let's just say a person is 100% disabled. Well, that money is ultimately coming from the government. Okay. So I think, depending on what their disability is, if there was the right way that while they, let's say if somebody doesn't have legs or something, major disability, but they certainly have a heart. They certainly have eyes. They certainly have arms. So maybe they could do something else. And um, I, I think that's something that, you know, as, as I said, I don't actually assess it as a disability. I actually look at it as a blessing mm -hmm. that, hey, one one weakness on one side means one strength somewhere else because the mind and the heart, you know, at the end of the day, the more that you can do for other people, uh, it's it's so it's a that's I, I'm, I mean, from my, my spirit side believes that all people are created equally. And that's number one. I'm obviously very uh, pro-life. But for the born and the unborn, I think everybody is entitled to a God given life and nobody should be held back in any way. But sometimes I will say people are lazy. People want to take off the system which is why we're really, I believe, in a, a big problem, not only locally, but nationally. That's a much bigger problem, but we need to work. God put us on earth to work, have it be a trade. And if you look here in New Orleans, which are, are, are you in New Orleans? Yes, sir. So I can remember when I grew up as a kid, I believe there was what was called the lighthouse for the blind. And I was always told that they made different household products. They might have made brooms. They might have made mops. I think that's a great trade. A friend of mine in my industry, he actually sews uh, structures. They make balloons, giant balloons, like hot air balloons for 
advertising. And he actually does this in Mississippi. And he actually recruits and works with several disability groups over there for people that might be disabled, but they still want to sew. And he even teaches them to sew. So the answer is we need to have programs to encourage people that employ people, maybe that own a warehouse, own a factory, own a retail store to actually do something to instead of sitting and just watching TV or passing time, but to hopefully have a better life that is engaged in actually the spirit of living. Thank you. And on the same note, what is your accept? Assessment of mental health care services in Louisiana. Wow, that is such a big topic, uh, but it's so uh, needed, um, especially in New Orleans, where let's say it's a very creative environment. You know, we have things like Mardi Gras. We have a lot of musicians. Um, there's a lot of alcohol. There's uh, a lot of drugs. There's a lot of abuse. So. I can tell you that I'm actually proud to be a member of what's called CCHR. That's Citizens Commission for Human Rights. What the Citizens Commission for Human Rights does, it actually helps people be less dependent on drugs and more dependent on therapy, more dependent on counseling, so that they can actually not only have a better life, but be a, a life not dependent upon drugs. In Hollywood, California, if you happen to go there, they actually have a museum of psychiatry. And this museum of psychiatry shows you of many, many celebrities and stars that you would probably recognize that were labeled as having mental health issues they were given drugs. Drugs ultimately sedated them and ultimately, sadly, usually ended up in a lot of suicides and people taking their own lives. Case in point, one of my favorite uh, entertainers was Robin Williams. He, as you probably know, committed suicide, but the records will actually show he was on all types of antidepressants and it didn't help him. As a major celebrity, it's my opinion that he was so lonely that nobody could really relate to him. And so the mental health is a very big issue. I think we should engage services of people like CCHR to hopefully come to Louisiana. They have many, many studies. You can actually go to cchr.org on the Internet. They freely give out information, provide pamphlets and studies, because we usually see these issues exist in highly creative environments. Hollywood, obviously, that's where they make movies and television shows, just like New Orleans, the birthplace of jazz, that mental health is real. And sadly, people either turn to drinking or drugs, and ultimately, if they do not get along with their family. Sadly, families kick them out and they become homeless. Homeless people are not homeless by choice. Homeless people are only homeless because their families ask them to leave. Well, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we complete the interview? Well, you know, number one, thank you. Uh, for the opportunity to address you, because regardless of my desire to run for public office, that's that's from the heart. I have nothing to gain. OK, I do not want to be a politician. Sadly, they call me political because it's a political position. But a true politician is somebody that requests money from other people's for political reason. I'm just the opposite. I'm a business person. It's what I've done all my life. I want to lead as a servant. I will be loyal to the people with no influence, 
no controls. And there's a very big difference between that. So I'm what we call the grassroots. I, I don't have the money. You probably look on TV. All these other people are running crazy advertisements, spending ridiculous sum of money. And instead of saying what they're going to do, they're actually doing just the opposite. They're pointing fingers at each other. And nobody needs to see that. Nobody uh, is going to win. What we have to do is put the citizens first. And it doesn't matter if you're white, black, disabled, um, normal, any nationality. We're all God's creation. And I truly believe in a we, the people moment. I'm a patriot. I believe in that we have real issues with crime, with economy. And it's all about bringing business to our state that will eradicate crime. Education needs to be greatly enhanced. Teachers paid need to be doubled in four years. And most importantly, we're getting ready to make a big announcement. It's my recommendation of a minimum of $20 an hour for everybody because you just can't exist anything less. To get a po' boy, a bag of chips, and a Coke costs $20. So the minimum wage for all workers needs to start. And until we have common sense values, we have a broken political system. So I'm the outsider. I appreciate the opportunity to convey my thoughts. I've got a great website, Scurlock wins w-i-n-s dot com also i'm ballot number 14 and as always i welcome input from anybody and i uh, appreciate consideration to be on our team to make a difference i appreciate your time and i hope you have a wonderful day all right god bless you have a great day thank you, you too bye-bye bye-bye